In July, the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, or JCVI, recommended that children over the age of 12 should only be vaccinated if they were extremely vulnerable. For example, if they already had a serious illness or condition. And most children and young people don't suffer severe illness if they contract COVID-19. The JCVI had initially cited concerns about an inflammatory heart condition linked to the Pfizer-BioNTech jab. Even so, it later amended its recommendations to state that 16 and 17-year-olds should be routinely offered the vaccine. But things change quickly, and it's looking more and more likely that 12-year-olds in the UK will now be vaccinated. Any risks will apparently be ignored, just as they are ignored for adults. Some countries, such as the US, Israel, France and Germany, have already recommended the vaccine for all children over 12. In the UK, the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, the MHRA, has already approved the vaccine for over 12s. So where are we now? As it stands, all 16 and 17 year olds in the UK are being offered the vaccine. It is recommended for 12 to 15 year olds if they are at high risk. These risks include severe neurodisability, which could include cerebral palsy, autism or epilepsy, Down syndrome, a severely weakened immune system, including some children with cancer, or profound and multiple learning difficulties. Children aged 12 to 15 can also have the vaccine if they live with a vulnerable adult. The vaccines so far authorised for distribution to children are Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna. So, only at-risk 12-year-olds are currently being jabbed. But that's about to change. NHS England has been told to prepare a plan to vaccinate all 12 to 15 year olds in the country. According to the BBC, the JCVI is weighing up the arguments on whether such a move should be made in the UK. Experts are assessing the risks and benefits to children of vaccination and how much it might slow the wider spread of the virus. One JCVI member, Professor Adam Finn, told Sky News that the committee was taking a very cautious approach. Elsewhere in the news, this is happening. There is already talk of trying to prevent disruption in schools. The government always pretends to be solving a problem, a problem it has usually created. SAGE, the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies that advi advises the government, says it is difficult to work out whether schools are driving rises in COVID and warns of more serious consequences for parents or carers if they are. We know what's happening here. We're being prepared for the compulsory vaccination of children. First, the government creates alarm. Children are spreading the virus. Healthy children pose a risk to children with medical conditions. Schools will be disrupted unless we do something to prevent it. This is the preparation period. Secondly, the government tries to appear as though it's avoiding the very thing it's preparing us for. For example, we're being told that risks and benefits are being weighed. It allows us to believe that the state is moving slowly. This is an illusion. The government knows what it wants to do. It knows this from the outset. Thirdly, compulsory vaccination for children. If parents object, they'll be demonised. They'll be treated as irresponsible and selfish, much like those who reject the vaccine generally or who don't want to wear a mask. As for parental consent, have a look at this NHS England document. This is actually quite clear. 12-year-olds will be allowed to consent to their own vaccination. This is ripe for abuse, for manipulation, and for the avoidance of parental 
consent. The power of government has been demonstrated time and again since the COVID crisis began. You know the examples. We've been locked in our homes. The police have threatened to rummage through our shopping trolleys. We've been ordered not to speak to our neighbours, told to stay out of our own gardens. It's the stuff of nightmares. We've been lied to and lied to. We won't need vaccine passports. We will need vaccine passports. It's now a familiar path. Crisis, apparent hesitation by the government to impose draconian rules, then the imposition of draconian rules. Now it's looking very much like compulsory vaccination for children. It's coming. We all know it. This is a whole new level of power by the state, a whole new level of coercion. Parents' authority over children is being severely compromised. This authority is being seized by the state, just like in any good communist country. We know where this is heading. It's heading to enslavement. It's no less serious than that. We will live our lives at the full control of incompetent and inept politicians. The tide will turn, though. I believe that. There is only so much we will take until a viable alternative begins to take shape. For Britain is that alternative. We'll never bow down to this bullying. We will all have to take back control of our lives at some point. So let's make sure we do it sooner rather than later. Join For Britain and let's start turning that tide today. Thank you for watching. If you would like to stay updated with all of our latest videos, please like the video below and subscribe to our channel. As you probably know, For Britain is shadow banned on most social media. So it's really important to like and share our videos in order to get our message out. Thanks again for helping us to fight back. Thanks again for helping us to bring back Britain.